Oh, well, hey everybody. Does it rain where you live? Because it rains where I live quite a bit. And I've been wanting to fly my Wizard X220 out in the rain because I think that would be super cool. And I'm like, why doesn't anybody fly out in the rain? Well, it's because a little, a little thing called electronics. And electronics use electricity and electricity and water don't usually go together. So, I have been researching a lot about how to waterproof your electronics. I know there's a super popular video by Flight Test about using Corrosion X for waterproofing electronics. And I know that some people say that it works great and some people say that it doesn't and it's the internet and so you, who do you believe? How do you know? Well, I had to try it for myself. Unfortunately, I could not find Corrosion X. All that I could find was a WD-40 brand and um, it's uh, right, uh, where did it, uh, oh, there it is. WD-40, this stuff is the specialist. They say it's specialist. It's water resistant silicone lubricant. And I'm not paid by WD-40, but I should be. Ha! Huh, just kidding. Sort of. Unless you, anyway, okay. So uh, so it says multi-surface, quick drying, protects against rust, etc., etc., etc. On the back, it says lubricates, waterproofs, and protects. So my thinking is, well, hey, it's uh, silicone, right? And a lot of electronic stuff uses silicone, silicone wiring, silicone cables, etc., etc. So it's probably safe, and if it waterproofs and stuff, then it should, I mean, it should waterproof. It should make it, or at least water resistant, right? So eventually I'm gonna try it on my wizard here, but you know, I didn't really, I can't afford to just like go spraying all kinds of chemicals on this thing and then seeing if it works. And I'm definitely not gonna like dunk it in water to test it. So what I did is I decided to test it on a little old spectrum receiver that I have. And I sprayed it with this stuff, dunked it in water and well, let me play the clip for you and you can decide for yourself. Okay, so here we've got our, this is a Spectrum 6115E Microlite Park Flyer 6 channel receiver. And we have a connection. You can see there's a little red light glowing on the receiver to show that it's working. And our throttle, our throttle is spinning the motor. Side piece here, these tweezers. I'm just going to spray some on there quite li liberally. Just gonna kind of let it soak in. And I'm probably, I'm gonna leave this here for a little while. So yeah, I'm just basically drenching this thing. So I'm just gonna drench it and let it air dry. I'm just gonna set it like this and let it dry. Okay, so it's been sitting here for about 15 minutes. Um, now I know I said I was gonna let it dry, but it's not really dry, and I think it's gonna take a long time for it to really actually dry. I've kind of I've, I've just blown on it a little bit to kind of help the drying process, but I think it's really not made to necessarily dry per se because it's made to keep things lubricated and, and whatnot. But um, so it, maybe it would over time, but it's it's mostly mostly. You know, it's it's stuck on there now. So it's been 15 minutes, and I'm gonna hook everything back up, and then we are going to dunk this guy in the water. Here we go. There's our little light. Okay. There's a light. The light appears to be working. Let's see if our motor works. Well, I guess if you were flying this, and while you're flying it, it, it would be getting wet if you're flying in the rain or fog or something like that. So what I'll do is I will keep the motor running. I'm going to just give it a little bit of a very small amount as we dunk this in the water here. It seems to be working okay. Now actually I have not treated the these connectors here so if something were to happen it could be because of those connectors the on this servo lead. All right. Wow, well, that's pretty cool. Now, of course, I don't actually, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it would short out if I had just dunked it in normally. Uh, I'm assuming it would have just shorted out, but obviously I couldn't test it and then have it short out because then I wouldn't be able to, to see if it still worked. So anyway, that seems pretty effective though. I mean, that's, you know, I dunked it underwater. Let's try that again. It's underwater and it's still working. So that seems to be, it seems like it works pretty good. I think the next thing I'm gonna test out will probably be the Hubson X4. 
And then f eventually moving up to my Eosheen Wizard, oh, I guess the next kind of step would be to test out other things like like the motor and the ESC and all that stuff, but you know, one thing at a time. So anyway, I, I consider that a pretty successful test. It's pretty cool, right? Am I wrong to think that that it, if it was not treated, it would have stopped working? Well, I don't know. Maybe somebody, some, maybe somebody can tell me. Cool. Thanks for watching. And hey, next time, or I'm, I'm planning on doing some more tests with these, so let me know if you want to see more stuff. And hey, maybe you have done this already, so let me know if it worked for you. Let me know if I can use it on my wizard here, and if it makes it waterproof or water resistant or what the deal is, okay? Thanks.